Hello stampers, I'm Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin in the United States. Today I have a couple cards to share with you. We're going to be using a technique called Bordered Sentiments. It's part of the Totally Techniques Design Team Blog Hop for October. I'm going to be using the beautiful Abundant Beauty Decorative Masks with some blending brushes, big and small. I think you're gonna love what I have in store for you. Please make sure at the end of the video, you click on the link that's gonna be in the top right corner to go to my blog and follow along on the blog hop. Everybody on the design team is going to be featuring this bordered sentiments technique. So you're gonna get a whole array of different ideas. Let's get started. We are going to make our first card today with the Autumn Leaves Bundle. I've also got Pretty Peacock, Crushed Curry, and Cherry Cobbler inks. I've got some Tape Runner. I like to use Seal Plus. The Self Adhesive Sparkle Gems are going to be really pretty on our cards. I've got the Dark Cherry Cobbler Stamp and Blend Marker. I've got some of our small um, blending brushes, my basic tools here with linen thread, a ruler, I've got mini glue dots and dimensionals. I'm also going to be using my bow jig to tie a bow. And we are going to be setting up a template. So let me bring in my cardstock layers. First of all, I've got scraps of crushed curry, pretty peacock, and cherry cobbler. My card base is four and a quarter by 11, very vanilla thick card stock. And I am going to be scoring that, I've already scored it actually, at five and a half. So we can fold that and use our bone folder to get a good crisp edge on that. Then I've got a piece of regular Very Vanilla at four by five and a quarter. Oh, you know what? We don't need that. Never mind that piece. <laughs> that was for the inside, but the inside is already vanilla. I'm just so used to having an inside layer. We've got um, Cherry Cobbler here. This is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. And another very vanilla regular cardstock at three and three quarters by five. Now, one other product that we're going to be using for our bordered sentiments card is the Abundant Beauty Decorative Masks. And these are so fun. You can use them with a variety of different um, accessories. You can spritz. You can use them with a spritzer. You can sponge them. We're going to be using blending brushes. You can trace them, if not this one, but some of them you can trace. You can also emboss them using Versamark ink and embossing powders. And you can add texture using embossing paste. And like I said, today we are going to be using our blending brushes. There's snowflakes in this one. And again, this is called the Abundant Beauty Decorative Mask. So we've got snowflakes. We have this houndstooth pattern. We've got these fun leaves. And then we've got a whole series to do these pretty flowers, which a lot of people consider these to be um, sunflowers. They can also be cone flowers. They can be any kind of flowers that you want, complete with two different sets of centers and also some leaves for the masking. So the first one that we're gonna use here today is the leaves. And what I like to do when I use a mask is I like to set up a template. So this is gonna be the layer that we're masking on. Let me set this aside. Um, to do our bordered sentiment technique. So we're also going to do a masking technique, which is kind of cool. We're going to hit two techniques today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that tape runner and I am going to add just a tiny bit of my Seal Plus to the back of my layer. I want this to stay in place. By the way, this is a piercing mat. We sell these in our Stampin' Up! stores. And I just wrap it with printer weight paper and tape it on with scotch tape. This is what I like to stamp on. The other thing I'm gonna be using is a piece of printer weight paper that I have cut 
to a one inch strip. This is going to be also part of my masking here. So I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna put it about right here. I wanna make sure that it's straight across. And we've got some scotch tape here and I am going to tape this in place right across my layer. So we're really pinning this down. Oops, I didn't get that long enough. And I think that is um, very important for the success of your card. So I am going to lay down my mask and I'm going to also tape that down because I don't want this moving. If it moves, it's just frustrating. So get it all taped down. And I think what I'll do here, um, for this particular technique, I don't know that it really matters which color you start with, but I usually tend to start with my lightest color, which is my crushed curry. I'm going to grab, this is one of the small blending brushes, and I like the small ones um, over the, let me grab a large one here, over the large ones for this particular, hang on, mask. You can see the difference here. These are regular size, these are small. I like the smaller ones because we've got a lot of very tight images here or pattern. Okay, so I am going to tap that in there. I'm gonna rub just a little bit off. It gets that big glob of ink off of there right away. And I'm just gonna come in here and start adding some ink. And I'm gonna do this in various places. There's not really any rhyme or reason to what I'm doing here. I just want color in various places. Okay, so we've started with that one. I also like to move my ink pads out of my way so that I'm not putting my blending brush in the wrong color. Now I've got my cherry cobbler here. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna just um, dab some of that off and then I'm gonna come in here and add some more color. I wanna leave enough room for all three of my colors. Tapping it into the ink pad loads your blending brush. And maybe I'll do another one right over here. And of course you can make that this just as dark as you want it or as light as you want it. Here goes the cherry cobbler and here comes my pretty peacock. Again, I'm gonna load that brush up, and just dab a little bit of that off. Add some more over here. And you can notice I'm not doing this part right here because it's, it's masked with that piece of printer weight paper. Make sure that I've got all my color here. Looks good. Okay. Now, the other thing that I wanna do with this mask is I would like, oh, I forgot to say that I have a very vanilla, whoops, a very vanilla envelope to match. So I'm going to pull this off of here and you can see what we have here, right? I'm gonna set that aside. I'm gonna bring in another, oops, my tape is coming off the back here another piercing mat and we're going to do the same thing to the flap of our envelope. Now I don't want the whole back of my envelope done so I'm just going to put a piece of scrap paper under there and I am going to tape this on here and we're going to do the same thing to our envelope flap because gosh I love to have a flap of whoops I forgot to tap that off you can see that it got pretty thick right there, right? And I'm just gonna stay with the same kind of colors that I did in the areas that are crushed curry. I don't think I need to do too much over here because that's kind of going off the page. I've hit that. And I'm going to bring in my cherry cobbler. And let's wipe some of that off. We're gonna come in here. Oh. My envelope flap is way up there. What am I doing? Let's just get that little edge right there. I was kind of doing the whole area here. Do some up here, some right here. And again, you can do this just as dark or as light as you want. I'm gonna put a little bit of more color in there. My envelope flap is just right here. So I think I've covered that pretty good. And now 
with my pretty peacock. We've got a little bit right there. Oh, I forgot to tap it off again. You can see how dark it got there, right? That's easy to do. I think that's gonna look good. So let's raise this up. So if I can get it un untaped. Oh my gosh, look at our envelope flap. Oh, that's so pretty, right? I love this. Okay, let me set this aside now. This, you can rinse this off in the sink. You can wipe, wipe it with a baby wipe. You can clean it however you would like. I'm gonna grab a baby wipe. My fingers are a little dirty here. And I'm just going to grab a baby wipe and wipe my hands off a little bit so that I don't get my card all messed up. All right, back here. So now we can pop this up. Remember, we only tagged it down with a little bit of tape. I'm gonna bring in a clean piercing mat here. And now we have this area. This is our bordered sentiment area. And you can leave it just like this and stamp your sentiment in there. But what I like to do is I like to give it an outline with a marker. And I'm using the Stampin' Blend marker. This is the Dark Cherry Cobbler. I'm just putting my ruler up here and I'm just going to pull my pen right across my line. Start it off the page so you don't get like a glob at the end. You can see the glob right there from the marker, right? And if you do that, you're going to be very successful in making a really nice line. Okay, back with that cherry cobbler. I am going to stamp my sentiment that says, with a grateful heart. And again, this is from the Autumn Leaves stamp set with cherry cobbler ink. That looks really good. And we can add this right to the front of our cherry cobbler layer. All of the dimensions in still photos, as well as an ingredient list, which is also a shopping list, can be found on my blog. And my blog address is right here, www.estampabove.com. Isn't that pretty? Now I wanted something else to go with this. So what I thought is I would take some of the dies from the autumn leaves dies and these scraps of cardstock. We've got crushed curry, um, pretty peacock, and cherry cobbler, and die cut all of these leaves. And I've already done that here, so I would have them ready for you. Let me set these leaves over here. <clears throat> And I'm just going to arrange these over here in this blank space. So I think the first thing I wanna do before I put my leaves on there is I wanna get the rest of my card built so that I know where I'm at with my placement of my leaves. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pull in my crushed curry and then I've got that big leaf from the autumn leaf stamp set. I'm gonna stamp that off once, and then I'm gonna come right here in the middle of my card and stamp it so it's much lighter. <clears throat> and then I've got, I'm thankful. And I'm gonna stamp that right in the middle here in that cherry cobbler ink, I'm thankful. And then this tiny little sentiment says, today and every day. So I'm gonna stamp both of those right on here and I love the way that turned out. Just a little something extra on the inside. Let me hold that up there so you can see that. Isn't that pretty? And now we can place this right on the front of our card. Mm, what do you guys think? The masking is really cool, but I really like that bordered sentiment, right? It looks like a layer going across there when in fact it's just masked. <clears throat> Here's
Here comes my dimensional. I'm going to put one dimensional on my largest leaf. And I'm going to add that. I think I'll put it on here just like this. And then I'm going to add a little bit of glue, just a tiny bit. You don't need a lot to pin this down. And less is better here. And I'm going to bring my leaves in and just kind of tuck them up under this one. Just like that. And I'll do another one right over here. Pin those down good. Make sure that that glue is hitting the card front. And then I've got my linen thread. So I took two pieces of linen thread that are about six inches long. And I like doubling this linen thread up. You get a whole bunch on a roll but I like doubling it up because I just think it makes it look extra special. You have a little bit more when you double it or even triple it sometimes, depending on what I'm, the look I'm trying to get. And my bow jig does a perfect little bow every single time. I love it. <clears throat> I'm gonna take my mini glue dot, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna take my mini glue dot and I'm gonna kind of curl it up into a log and add it right at the top of that leaf and pop that right on there. Goodness gracious, isn't that fantastic? What a beautiful card, bordered sentiment. Now, I have another one that I made with the Abundant Beauty masks and let's go ahead and I'll show you how I made the other one. I'm gonna change out my piercing mat so I have a nice clean surface here. I've got our regular size blending brushes here. We are going to use the Abundant Beauty masks, decorative masks, and we're going to use the flower. The leaves you can use, I'm not using them for this card, but we've got the detailed center, the outline center, and these pretty flowers. So again, I am using very vanilla cardstock. I've got two pieces here that are four by five and a quarter and also a tall early espresso card base that's four and a quarter by 11. So I'm gonna start with my front layer. And this time I'm using a little bit thinner mask for my bordered sentiment. This is only three quarters of an inch wide. So let's get a little bit of our seal down on our card front. We're gonna lock that in place here. And this time I'm gonna do this at an angle. And again, this is a little bit thinner. And so before I pin that down, I wanna kind of bring my flowers in here and see how are these gonna fit in here. Let's see where I'm gonna fit them at. Okay, I think I'm gonna do it just like this. And I want my sentiment to kind of go right in here. Okay, so that looks good. Let's move that out of the way. Again, I'm really going to utilize my tape to keep that mask for my sentiment in place. Then I'm going to bring my flowers in here. And I am going to tape that in place also. Okay, we're ready to go. I'm going to bring back the Pretty Peacock, and this time I'm going to use Pecan Pie and Early Espresso ink. Whoops. So let's start with our Pretty Peacock. And I'm gonna just bring in one of my mats here so we have a bigger space. Get that loaded up good, get some of, blotch off some of that ink. And now I'm gonna stay right in the middle of this flower because I want more intense color near the center. So I'm just gonna keep going right in the center here. You can even grab some more ink if you think you need it right in the center. I'm gonna go right here to this center and kind of stay right in there. You can see how that ink is intensified around the flower center. 
Okay, now I'm not gonna reload. Now I'm gonna go out and do the rest of these petals. No reloading with the ink, just gonna keep blending with that blending brush. You guys are gonna love this, it's so pretty and so easy. You see how easy this is, right? I'm gonna set that aside. We are going to grab our pecan pie. We're going to lift up this mask. Are you ready for the beautifulness that is about to happen? Oh my gosh, look how pretty those are. We're gonna leave that mask in place. And now we're gonna come in with these large centers. And you're just gonna line them right up. And again, I do recommend that you take advantage of that tape. It's really gonna save you. I tried to do it without the tape and it was just like, oh, I wish I would've used the tape. I'm gonna get rid of some of that. This is the pecan pie. You can see this is super easy to get this color on here. Okay. And then we're gonna come in with that early espresso and I saved the darkest color for the detailed centers. Now, if you find these aren't lining up, it's probably because you have them upside down. I did that before too. And these do not line up absolutely perfectly. They're not intended to. They're intended to be a little off center because that's kind of the way these flowers are. So don't get nervous if you go, oh, it's not lining up perfectly. It's not supposed to. Here we go with our early espresso. Load that up good. And now we're gonna come in here and do this. Get that on there nice and dark. Oh, I love this. Okay, you guys ready for the reveal? Let's take a look here and see what we have. What do you think? Isn't that so pretty? All right, now we still have our mask here, right? So now we're gonna lift that off. And there is that border for our sentiment. And now I've got a different stamp set I'm using here. I wanted something really long, so I got out my wonderful thoughts. And I've got you're wonderful, you're loved, and you matter. So I'm gonna grab that and I am going to stamp that in the early espresso. And I'm gonna bring that ink pad to my stamp just so I can really see what's going on because this is really long, kind of a thin detailed image. And I'm going to stamp that right in the middle here. You have to make sure if you're gonna use something this long that you um, have your mask at a big enough angle, right? And then I've got Mm, stamp and write marker. Here we go. I've got a stamp and write marker and early espresso. So I'm going to grab that ruler again and I'm going to put it right up here. And you want to kind of leave it behind your flower a little bit so that you don't have a gap in between your line and the flower. I'm using the large end on my marker. And again, I'm going to start off the page. And you can see with this marker, it's getting lighter. So I did this several times just to make sure that my line was nice and dark. And I do recommend that you wipe off the edge of your ruler because you just put marker on it, okay? You don't wanna wreck your card at this point. I'm gonna dry this off. I just rubbed it right on my shirt. <laughs> and then we're gonna do this. And again, I'm leaving a little bit of that flower showing. Don't let your ruler move either. I should probably tape that down. I should give myself some good advice there. I'm gonna do it several times. You can see it's kind of lighter as that marker goes along. There we go, look at that. Ha! I love this look. Okay, now both of these cards need to be dazzled up a little bit. Um, let me see, let's, we need to do, I need to show you how I did my inside too. So this is the other layer for the inside. And with this one, I just took my, this little, whoops, this little flower right here. And I brought my mask in and I went like this. 
this. And we're gonna do this. And again, keep it concentrated right in the center and then go to the outside, just like that. And we did all the other layers the same way. I'll show you at the end what that looks like. I don't wanna just continually repeat myself here. Here comes our card base. We're gonna put this right on the front of our envelope, or our envelope, our early espresso card base. I love this technique of the bordered sentiments because it's great. It's a beautiful technique. Any, any level of stamper can do this, but especially brand new stampers, it is great for brand new stampers because it looks like you have used a whole bunch of stuff when you've only used one sheet of cardstock, some masks, ink and some blending brushes so it makes it super easy now the other thing i did here is let me see if i can find my big ruler i took my linen thread and i measured out two pieces that were 24 inches long so i'm going to cut this and again i wanted something a little more substantial than just one layer of linen thread and I put this around the top of my card. I'm going to end up over here. So I'm just kind of evening it out here. I'm gonna tie both of these with a bow, kind of taking up a little space over here where it's a little emptier on my card. And don't you wish you had another set of hands here? It'd be really helpful when you're tying a bow like this. That's going to be tight, you guys. Hang on. I'm not going to like that. I didn't hang on to it long enough. Okay, third time's a charm. Hang on, let me get this straightened out. I'm going to pull this down a little bit. Pull this down a little bit. I wanted really long tails on this one because I thought that would just be really attractive here. And last but not least, we're going to take both of these cards and we are going to add some of these sparkle gems. And I thought gold would look really pretty on here. This is kind of a coppery gold color. And I just thought that would be really attractive. So I'm gonna grab a big one right here. And how about a couple smaller ones? Whoops, I thought I had that, but I didn't. And we'll just kind of dot those up there. Isn't that pretty? Got that little bit of sparkle in there. Now, how about this one? Let's do two, a big one and a little one. We have a little bit more white space on this one. How about another one right up here? Oh my gosh. Let me show you the finished card here. This one has the inside in it. You can see that fun bow. I just really like that. Oh, I didn't put embellishments on this one. Let me get those on quick. I just didn't want to repeat everything again because that just, I'm very respectful of your time. I don't want to be wasting your time. You already saw me do the mask aid. Okay, so here's my envelope. I just put this large flower on here and blended it on. Here's my inside, isn't that pretty? Oh my goodness, this is so beautiful. And here we have the other one and our matching envelope flap. So this is the bordered sentiment technique. Super fun, super easy. This is great to make some really quick cards. The Abundant Beauty mask, the decorative mask, so fun. These are in our holiday mini catalog. Please don't forget to subscribe. Whoops, subscribe right down here to my YouTube channel. You don't want to miss anything I have coming out. Now remember, this is part of a blog hop. So right up here is going to be a link where you can click on that. It's going to take you to my blog, www.estampabub.com. And when you scroll down, you're going to see some little thumbnail pictures after my last picture of these projects. And that's going to be links when you click on them that go to the other blogs for the Totally T Techniques design team. Everybody's going to be featuring the 
sentiment border technique. So you're going to see some really cool different ideas. I encourage you guys to hop along. You're going to find those thumbnails on each of the other blogs with the design team so you can keep going from blog to blog. That's what we call a blog hop. If you're in the U.S. and you don't have a Stamping Up demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. This is my current host code that changes every month that can always be found on my blog at www.astampabub.com. If you're new to Stampin' Up or if you've been away for a little while, you need the current catalogs and you're in the United States, I would be happy to send them to you. Please don't hesitate to pop me an email at kelly, K-E-L-L-Y, at astampabub.com. Request the catalogs, give me your address, and I can get them out in the mail right away. Okay, join the blog hop, subscribe to my blog, go check out more projects on my blog. I've got a ton of ideas out there. And thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day today to spend it with me. Bye-bye.